Bill S-217. Senator Moody. Thank you, Your Honor. Honorable Senators, I move that this bill be read a second time. It is moved by the Honorable Senator Moody, seconded by the Honorable Senator Patterson, that this bill be read a second time. On debate, Senator Moody. Thank you, Your Honor. Honorable Senators, it is a great honor to speak at the second reading of the sponsor, as sponsor of the bill S-217, an act to establish the Office of the Commissioner for Children and Youth in Canada. I have been waiting for this moment for a very long time, and I believe most Canadians have been waiting for this moment for a long time as well. The opportunity for Parliament to debate and eventually vote for the creation of a National Commissioner for Children and Youth Persons. These words were spoken eight years ago by then MP Mark Garneau when he spoke at second reading on his bill C-420, the Commissioner for Children and Young Persons in Canada Act. Today, I repeat these words to express this same sentiment but with it, I must express my profound disappointment that almost 30 years after the ratification of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, we still do not have a, ch a Commissioner for Children and Youth, and we have not done nearly enough for children. Today, I will elaborate on the mandate of this office and the value it will produce for all Canadians. But before I do this, Senators, I think it's important to speak to you about the need for urgency and why we must make this bill a priority for our children and youth. Colleagues, Canadian children are in a state of crisis and have been for decades. The data before us is, is really quite shocking. Accidents are the leading cause of death for our children. We know that thousands of children in Canada die every year due to preventable injuries. We know that the second highest cause of death is suicide. We know that one in three children are victims of abuse, that one in five live in poverty. We know that one in 10 children experience food insecurity. First Nations, Métis, and Inuit children are in crisis as well. A 2019 report by the Assembly of First Nations found that 47% of First Nations children living on reserve live in poverty. When it comes to the overall health and quality of life, over 25% of our children and youth are obese. Hospital visits for mental health concerns are rising. And when it comes to health and well-being of children, our global ranking in Canada has been slipping. We rank 25th out of 41 OECD countries on measures with respect to children's health, health and well-being, according to UNICEF's well-being report card. This represents a significant decrease from our 12th place ranking in 2007. One troubling sign is the rising rate of infant mortality. Whereas decades ago we were leaders, today our infants are dying at a rate that is amongst the highest in OECD countries, with Nunavut, Nunavut's rate being three times the national average. Children are the most vulnerable amongst us. They must depend on their parents, on their guardians, teachers, coaches, and other members of their community to be their voice and to provide them with protection and care. As parliamentarians, we need to make the well-being and future of children our priority. Senators, the statistics demonstrate that we are failing and the image they reveal is quite shocking. But what is more disturbing is our inaction. Each of us know children who are affected, have seen them in our communities, we have heard their stories, and we have seen the statistics come to life. These are Canada's children, and we are no longer, and can no longer ignore this crisis. It is happening before us, and we must ask ourselves, how can we act? What will we do in response? Senators, in this bill, I seek to propose a solution that is entirely reasonable, based on a principle that is entirely reasonable. Regardless of where the child is born, their ethnicity, their race, sexual orientation, gender, 
or their level of physical and mental ability, children and youth are our most precious resource. They are gifts and deserving of every opportunity to grow, thrive, and succeed. And we have an obligation to do everything we can to make Canada the best, the best place to be a kid. So this is where the Child Commissioner comes in. No, not a magic bullet that will solve all the problems that our children face, but is designed to make an immediate and important changes to our policy discourse while we continue to work on the broader systemic changes. The commissioner, as designed in this bill, is to address three main areas of action. To act as an independent officer of the parliament, whose role will be to hold parliament accountable in regards to its obligations for the well-being of children and youth, and to ensure that their rights are respected. To collaborate with various levels of government and communities to work on behalf of children and youth to advocate for their needs and to elevate the voice of children and youth in the political discourse. Honorable Senators, it will come as no surprise to many of you that the topic of the Child Commissioner has long been discussed and debated here in Canada. Unfortunately, for too long, we have shirked our obligations to children under the conventions of the rights of children. The time has come for change. Historically, Canada has been a beacon for human rights internationally. Look no further than our role in establishing the world's first large-scale armed peacekeeping force in response to the 1956 Suez Canal crisis. This effort was led by the Canada's Secretary of State for External Affairs and future Prime Minister then, Lester B. Pearson. When we think of children's rights, we must shift our focus to another Pearson, one who in her pivotal roles on behalf of Canada's children, the Honourable Langdon Pearson, was the Vice Chair of the Canadian Commission for the International Year of the Child in 1979. Canada was then known as a leader in children's rights. When the Convention of the Rights of the Child were concluded, we were swift in our adoption and ratification. And following ratification, the UN has come back to us and continued to advise our leadership about the Convention and on its implementation. Their advice to Canada was centered around one key recommendation, that Canada establish the role of a federal commissioner. Since these reports were tabled and these recommendations were made some 25 years ago, the critical issues that were highlighted then continue and have gotten worse. We have fallen asleep at the wheel, and colleagues, it is time that we wake up and that we act. The United Nations has been an important voice in calling Canada to establish a commission for children and youth, but they have not been the only voice. There have been strong and consistent voices from here within Canada calling for this action. Honorable Senators, within the Senate, three of our colleagues, Senators Lovelace Nicholas, Jaffa, and Munson, have worked tirelessly to recommend and to advance action in this area. Their work as members of the Standing Committee on Human Rights studied children's rights and published a Senate report back in 2007 titled The Silenced Citizens. I'll read two excerpts from this report. The committee quickly realized that one of its primary proposals was should be the establishment of a children's commissioner at the federal level in Canada to promote responsible and good governance and provide a seamless service delivery for children. Almost every witness who appeared before the committee then, independent experts, advocates on children's rights, those linked to the UN and others, all supported the establishment of <coughs> a monitoring and facilitating body such as the Commissioner. Honourable colleagues, for 13 years we have recognised 
as an institution, what we should be doing. Now it is time to act. In 2009, following this report, current Minister Mark Garneau introduced a bill to create a child commissioner. This ended in defeat in the other place in 2012. Understanding the urgency of this unfinished business, other, other MPs, MP Cotler, Quach, and Leach, all introduced bills that died on the paper. There have been too many failed attempts. Collectively, we have failed as Canadians, and this is a stain on our leadership as parliamentarians. Many in Canada have called for, and continue to call for, the Commissioner for Youth and Children. As early as 1991, the Canadian Coalition on the Rights of Children called for a Commissioner. In 2010, UNICEF Canada published a report calling for Federal Child Commissioner. They stated that an independent National Children's Commissioner would put children's best interests in the public agenda encourage different departments and orders of government to coordinate their efforts and to promote better laws and policies for servicing our children. In 2016, Children's First Canada's landmark report on the state of Canada's children recommended the creation of a federal commissioner. In 2018, the Canadian Bar Association wrote a letter to the Prime Minister proposing the creation of a commissioner. In 2019, the final report of the inquiry on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls called for in a call for justice 12.9, called for a commissioner in every province, territory, and one at the federal level. Again, in 2019, the Canadian Coalition of Youth Advocates that is the organization that unites provincial and territorial child and youth advocates across Canada, all called for the child commissioner. In their statement made in March of last year, they said, for years, we have called for the creation of an independent parliamentary officer with a focus on indigenous children, young people migrating to Canada, and those involved with youth justice, health and mental health systems. There are still too many children who fall outside of our legislated mandates as they rely on federally funded services. The lack of rights-based resources for these young people is glaring. This is despite the commitments made to all children in Canada through our ratification of UNCRC nearly 30 years ago. And may I remind you, in 2021, we face the next review by the United Nations on our implementation of the Convention of the Rights of Children. Many Canadian organizations have shared with us their reports assessing the state of Canada's implementation of the Convention. And for all of these organizations, the establishment of the Commissioner for Children and Youth is a central and important recommendation. If Canada is to faithfully implement the Convention of the Rights of the Child and play its role as an international human rights leader, we must establish an independent voice for children and youth. We have always known this. And now it's time to act. Honorable Senators, this is unfinished business. As we consider our next steps, I urge us to be united in this challenge. As Mark Garneau said back in 2012, there is no room for part partisanship today, especially when we are talking about something as important as our children. Today I propose to you that the Commission of Children and Youth should be our first step in addressing the crisis facing children here in Canada. Here are my reasons. The provinces want this. Individual child commissioners and advocates across Canada and the Canadian Coalition of Youth Advocates wholeheartedly endorse the Federal Commissioner for Children and Youth. They want a federal partner who can facilitate their communication with Ottawa, help share best practices throughout the country, 
and they, and they have wanted this for a while. They see the federal commissioner as working closely with the provinces and territories to partner on the many issues that face our children in their provincial jurisdictions. They hope that the federal commissioner could help Canada move towards greater equity in the well-being of children and building a sustainable long-term strategy and vision for Canadian children. In our discussions with them, they said they want the federal commissioner to be their voice at the federal level, to set a national vision, to monitor policy, providing Canadians with a broader and clearer view of the impact policymakers have on our kids. Child commissioners and advocates across Canada see the commissioner as partnering with them to help be advance best practices, achieve national adoption. They see the federal commissioner as partnering with them to draw attention to national issues that require provincial and federal cooperation. And they also see this partnership can be developed without a federal commissioner encroaching on provincial jurisdiction. And senators, we know that this level of collaboration can and will be the core to this role. It would be extremely powerful and impactful. Here in Canada, many wonderful organizations and individuals who have been champions for children's rights, every one of these individuals and groups acknowledge that they cannot provide the same level of influence and impact as could an independent officer of the parliament. We have heard from many of these individuals who advocate on behalf of children that many Canadians are not aware of the crisis our children are enduring. They hope that the Commissioner of Child and Youth would be a powerful voice to bring focus to this crisis, to raise the level of dialogue in Canada about the crisis, to amplify their voices and to be an advocate for children. An advocate who would focus, amplify awareness, study and report on issues such as food insecurity, poverty. An advocate who would provide critical analysis of government action as a trusted and respected source. An advocate who would evaluate the impact of policy and legislation on the everyday lives of our children especially on First Nations, Métis and Inuit, and refugee children and youth who all fall under federal jurisdiction. They indeed identify the need for an advocate who would highlight the poor outcomes of failed initiatives, who would provide oversight for the implementation of the Convention of the Rights of, a child, of the Child. They point out that where we worry that Canadians are blinded to the struggle to address the crisis that our children are living, the advocacy of the commissioner would shift the national consciousness towards raising awareness and would make us a more child-friendly country. And they point out that it is unreasonable for us to entrust this responsibility to not-for-profits and civil society. It should be the core responsibility of the Federal Commissioner for Children and Youth. We have heard rep repeatedly that there is no public officer in our federal government with the obligation to speak to children, to seek their views, and to hear directly from them on the issues that affect them, and the effect that our actions have on their lives. We, we heard that we need to establish an effective way for children and youth to share their views and to amplify their voice. They proposed that an important part of the, the commissioner's advocacy would be to directly engage with children and youth so that we can hear directly from them what they're going through, um, to provide them with a means to raise their own solutions. Children's solutions to children's problems should be heard, considered, and when appropriate, acted upon. And this would be a core responsibility of the federal commissioner. 
Colleagues, we have a lot of tools and mechanisms and vehicles, all available within the government, directly aimed at helping children. But we know that none of them goes far enough, and none of them has enough collective influence or reach to address the issues that we face. We have the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, but we know that despite the, their best intentions, policy and direction will be guided more by political obligation to the sitting government and by the mandate shaped by the political leadership rather than by the pressing needs of Canadian children. We have the public service, but again, its direction is guided by politically oriented leadership. We have the Poverty Council, on which there is a seat reserved for child-focused individuals. Again, the lack of reach and limitation of mandate prevents effective engagement. A federal commissioner would, broaden, would provide a broader mandate and influence and reach in, this, in his role or her role as an advocate. So the role of the Commission of Children and Youth would be strengthened by powers appropriate to its mandate, the right to intervene in court on behalf of a child or as a friend of the court, the right to visit juvenile centers and other institutions that house youth without warning, the ability to compel the sharing of information. These powers are fundamental to ensuring that the Office of the Commissioner can carry out its mandate. I put it to you, children deserve more than incomplete, fragmented, and ineffective solutions. They deserve to be considered as a priority, and we should be building solutions based on a long-term vision and strategy for them. And most important, importantly, colleagues, Canadians have spoken on this. They want a commissioner for children and youth. A recent poll commissioned by the Children's Healthcare Canada found that 73% of Canadians support the creation of this role. There is a broad belief in the public that the current system is not serving our children very well, nor is it providing them with a voice. In our discourse, we also met with the ITK, NWAC, Métis Nation of Alberta. We have conducted online webinars with youth groups to generate discussion, and we have spoken to commissioners in other international jurisdictions. The establishment of a federal commissioner of children and youth is strongly supported and seen by all as urgently needed. I wanted to talk to you about a living example of how it works. The model of child commissioner in New Zealand can teach us two, two lessons. The first is, when New Zealand was going through a serious child poverty crisis in the early 2010, during, during which they were discussing the issue, it became clear that really it was not the interest of the government of the day. And understanding that there would be no action, the child commissioner then decided to adopt a strategy to address the issue while allowing the, the political and bureaucratic ranks the opportunity to catch up putting in place a campaign to raise public awareness and to make it an issue that the general public understood and was mobilized on. It became a flashpoint for the upcoming election, was adopted by all party platforms, and once the PM, the new PM was sworn in, the commissioner became the main contributor to the child Reduction, um, reduction strategy and was positioned to inform the government. Through his advocacy, the New Zealand Child Commissioner brought attention to child poverty where politicians throughout the country were ignoring it. The second example has to do with their education, education reform in New Zealand. In response to issues that were occurring at the time in that country, while online consultations were used to target the broader public, the focus on in-person interviews was the inclusion of children from marginalized groups, such as the Maori, 
the indigenous people of New, New Zealand. And children had a lot to say when they were asked. They spoke about the current system had failed them. They spoke about racism, discrimination, the impact of poverty and food insecurity on their education. The final report ended up being the driving force behind education reform in New Zealand, including policies on racism and discrimination through hearing the voices of children. I'll spend a few minutes talking about the bill. The role of the commissioner as designed in this bill is to address three main priorities. To act as an independent officer of parliament whose, uh, whose concern would be holding parliament accountable in regards to its obligations on the well-being of children and youth and the respect of their rights. To collaborate with various levels of government and communities to work on behalf of children and youth and to advocate for their needs and to elevate the voice of children and youth in the political discourse. The most important principle that applies to this role is the principle of independence. It is essential for this officer to be independent, to have the capacity to function independently and to use this independence to achieve meaningful advocacy. The work of the commissioner should be driven by evidence, not by politics. All Canadians must be able to trust that the government of the day does not have the ability to influence the commissioner that the commissioner can be relied upon to hold the government to account. We have examples of commissioners who are independent here in Canada, independence leading to meaningful advocacy, case in point, the Commission of Official Languages, independence leading to strong accountability, case in point, the parliamentary budget officer or the privacy commissioner. The Commission of Children and Youth should be able to look past the politics of the day, to focus on the long-term needs of children and youth and to bring them to the attention of Parliament. For these reasons, the Commission of Children and Youth is best positioned as an independent officer. And this was emphasized in the 2007 Senate report as well. Honorable Senators, if we are to make sure that this office has the power it needs to operate, it must be an independent officer. Now, the purpose of independence is to carry out their function, which includes reviewing and reporting on policy instruments, such as legislation. The first and key role of the commissioner will be to exercise oversight on government legislation and to consider the rights and well-being of children in this regard. I believe that we all agree that children and youth are too important to our future as a country to remain sidelined in our legislative process. It is imperative that we develop processes that make sure that children and youth get the proper consideration in the creation of our policy and legislation. The commissioner would examine every piece of legislation, every change in regulation, every exercise of a policy instrument and, where appropriate, comment or report on the impacts of a specific action on Canadian children. The Child Commissioner would also have the mandate to assist the government in drafting legislation and to collaborate with the public service to provide information. The Commissioner would be a resource for committees and be present to advise parliamentarians in other spheres of their work enabling us to receive timely and current evidence and information on the state of Canadian children. Our own Senate committee report also spoke to this. They stated, all witnesses in support of such a body emphasized that children's commissioners should conduct ongoing examinations of federal legislation, services, and funding for programs affecting children and their rights making rec recommendations and assessments and criticisms. The second key role of the commissioner would be to engage communities and provinces. In this role, the commissioner would advocate, support, and expand on the work of provincial partners, would bring to national focus issues that are affecting the provinces, territories, and nations. 
One of the important aspects of the role would be to mandate to engage with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. All federal government has specific obligations under the Constitution toward indigenous children and youth, but they have failed in their obligations. The, com the Commissioner for Children and Youth would address this failure, bringing measurable improvements to the nation-to-nation -nation relationship between the indigenous peoples, nations of Canada, and the federal government. The commissioner, the commissioner would address some of the recommendations for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, for example. Calls for justice from the inquiry on missing and murdered indigenous, indigenous women and girls. And in this role, provide a bridge to the federal government specifically on children's issues when called upon. The history of the Canadian government and the indigenous children is filled with tragedies, injustices, and violations of human rights that have led to trauma passed on from, for many generations. In crafting this bill, it was my intention to stay away from the colonial practices of the past and to move towards a mutually respectful relationship. And we have spent countless hours discussing this bill with our colleagues in indigenous nations throughout the country to learn their perspective on this role and will continue to reach out more broadly. I look forward to the committee stage to hear from witnesses and to make changes as we see fit. The bill will guide the interaction of the, the child commissioner with all nations and indigenous peoples. The commissioner will acknowledge nations' independence and assist them when called upon, will be knowledgeable about communities, be sensitive to their cultures and practices, assist communities in the preservation of their culture and language. Our expectation of the Office of the Commissioner is that staffing will reflect the diversity of Canadian communities and that First Nation, Métis and Inuit individuals will be placed in senior roles within this office. I would even go further and recommend that the government consider appointing an Indi Indigenous First Commissioner for Children and Youth. The Commissioner would be an important voice and a long-lasting partner who could strengthen nation-to-nation -nation relationships. The third key aspect to the Commissioner is the elevation of the voice of children and youth in the political discourse. Children deserve to be heard, yet their voices are often ignored and forgotten. We must listen to children, hear their problems, and their solutions to their problems. We must create a safe space for them to share their concerns and must give them access to continuing dialogue about their future. The Commissioner's engagement would include efforts to draw out the issues of concern for young Canadians through online and in-person engagement. The Commissioner would go to children to hear their voices, meeting children in difficult circumstances such as juvenile detention centres and other care institutions. The Commissioner would interact with those who care for and serve the interests of children to better understand their needs and the issues they face. The core of this idea of engagement is the core role of the Commissioner in seeking children's thoughts on children's issues to find solutions arising from children. Our children cannot participate or vote in the democratic process. Therefore, a commissioner would be a constant way to make sure that their voice is amplified. When children are allowed to speak, we will relish the sound of their voices. Colleagues, Canadian children ought to be aware of their rights. The Commission of Children and Youth will have the responsibility not only to educate children on their rights, but will have the responsibility to educate all Canadians on the Convention of the Rights of the Child. This would be a core activity for the office's community interactions and also a specific recommendation of the 2007 Senate report. This, Senators, is how we will build a society better suited for our children. 
Across our country, Canadians are grappling with a new reality that is rapidly changing our lives. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought the issues facing our children and youth into sharp focus. It has unmasked the unique ways that children are made vulnerable and the urgent need to put in place immediately the resources, supports, and protections that have been missing for all Canadian children. In so many ways, it has deepened the crisis that they face. COVID-19 has only made things worse for our kids. Food insecurity, domestic abuse, interruptions to their daily routines and education are among some of the, the more severe issues that our children have confronted. But we struggle to know to what extent or to what future impact this will have on children because we don't have their voices. We are not listening. Children, we need a commissioner for times like these so that we can hear your voice and so that we can understand the impact of what is happening in your world on you. And this is why I chose to introduce the bill and to make this speech today. Those who argue that we are currently considering a priority emergency legislation alone miss one glaring truth. For all children, this is emergency legislation. Senators, today we owe Canadian children three things, <clears throat> our obligation, our urgency, and our action. We must recognize the power and the responsibility that we as parliamentarians hold to address these problems. This is our obligation. Together, we must realize the urgency of the problems that Canadian children and youth face. And most importantly, together, we must move to action. Today in Canada, we have an opportunity to make sure that every child, every Canadian child, has every opportunity to thrive in this land. Although this bill will not solve all our problems, it would be one of the most significant steps that we as a parliament will have taken in a long time. And we must take that step together. This Commissioner for Children and Youth will advocate for our children, hold the government accountable, give voice to our children, and work with our communities when called upon to make sure that protections for them are in place. Colleagues, my team and I have spent months working on this bill, and I thank them, and reflecting on what we have heard. Working with members of our public sector, not-for-profits, civil society groups, we have developed the bill you see in front of you. We welcome the dialogue that we'll have as we examine this bill, and I happily invite your questions, comments, and amendments once we get to committee. I encourage you to vote for this bill and to support its passage. Together, let us give children and youth the voice they deserve and need. Let us show communities that we care enough to give them the resources they ask for for their children. Let us show Indigenous Canadians that we respect them as nations and that we are serious about working towards repairing the harms of colonialism. Let us show the world that we are serious about our human rights obligations. And let us show Canadians that in a true democracy, we are not afraid of accountability, that we welcome honest scrutiny. Let us show children and youth that in Ottawa, there are people who care and listen and ready to do what we know and have known for a long time is the right thing to do. This is why I joined the Senate. This is the change that I want to make. Please join me in this journey. Thank you. Question, Senator? Would Senator Moody accept the question? Senator Munson. Well, thank you, Senator uh, Moody. I do have a, just a quick question for you. And uh, my goodness, have you done your homework? It's really uh, refreshing and wonderful to see uh, 
if there's one thing I'd like to see before I leave this chamber in a year from now as a children's commissioner, we've been fighting for this since, as you said in our report, 2007, uh, for a children's commissioner. And there always seems to be an appetite for a while, then it, then it disappears. People become cabinet ministers, and sometimes the focus is not there anymore. So I, uh, and 70 countries have, uh, have a children's commissioner, close to 70 countries or some sort. Uh, just a very quick question, uh, and I will speak to this, of course. Uh, where, does it, where do disabled children fit in the role of a children's commissioner and their rights? Thank you, Senator Munson. Thank you, Senator Munson, for your question. Um, part of the role of the commissioner and an integral part of the role of the commissioner is to elevate from the provincial level um, of child advocates and commissioners um, the best practices, the best approaches that uh, they can elevate to the national level and therefore spread across jurisdiction. So one opportunity for the commissioner is to bring to the bigger forum, to Canada as a whole, uh, opportunities that are not widespread. I think the other, the counter of that, would be where very poor conditions exist for a particular group of children, such as disabled children. And if this were across many regions, some, it could become an issue that, uh, it being a systemic issue, that the commissioner could address. So I think there are opportunities on both sides of the coin to spread the good and to highlight the, the issues that are occurring. Senator Mons, do you have question? another question? <clears throat> I have many questions. Uh, but I see we have about three minutes and, uh, to go um, in terms of the questions. Um, some of the idea of a national commissioner, to use the term national commissioner, uh, and sometimes there's been a little pushback in the province of Quebec of having a national commissioner dealing with the rights of children uh, in, uh, in the province of Quebec. Have you consulted the uh, province of Quebec and other provinces that have uh, provincial ombudspersons dealing with children's rights and so on, and, and has there been a buy-in from uh, all the provinces? Again, thank you for your question. So, in fact, part of the very um, deliberate and uh, in-depth work that we did was to speak to every child commissioner that we could get in touch with, and one of the commissioners that we spoke to was uh, the commissioner representing children in Quebec. Um, we had strong level of support across the board. Um, commissioners feel that this has been that link, that added step, um, that person that would partner with them to make sure that they were able to bring things to the federal level that they currently cannot. Um, we have strong support, as I said, in Quebec, um, and the folks that we spoke to are currently very supportive of the idea of a, of a, of a commissioner at the national level. Senator Munson, you have another question? Unless, Senator Martin, do you have a question? Oh, uh, I, just very briefly, uh, yes, we do need a children's commissioner in this country, and yes, there's a minority a parliament that we're dealing with these issues, and we all want to get involved in the debate. And this has to pass here, then it has to pass over in the House side, and, and then hopefully become law uh, before a minority government falls or uh, lives out its mandate. Uh, within the context of a uh, children's commissioner, should there be a minister? I know the prime minister had took on youth and so on and so forth, and there's a minister of social development and so on. But should there be a specific minister dealing with youth so that the commissioner that has to report to parliament can also deal directly with a, a youth uh, ministry, federal? Senator Modi. Again, thank you for your, your question. It is, it, when we looked at the, the state of play across Canada, there are a number of um, ministries that support and um, have children as part of their mandate, the responsibility for children as part of their mandate. And in fact, there are a number of 
initiatives over the past few years where children's representatives have been embedded in, in, in various uh, groups and committees within ministries um, to be that voice. But again, the limitation of the individuals and these roles that we found when we looked closely was their mandate, their ability, their reach beyond their committee, their reach beyond the ministry. And in fact, in, in doing some of this work, we've reached out across four ministries to talk to people because that's the, that's the state Senator of the... I'm sorry, your time is...